Hi, this is Alan Boyette with Logs to Lumber. Welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple, low-cost garage kiln to finish the drying process. This kiln design is intended to dry a small quantity of wood. The kiln performs two functions. It dries the lumber to its final moisture content and it sterilizes the wood to kill any insects that may remain. This oak lumber has been air drying outside in my drying shed for about a year. The moisture content of this wood is approximately 12%. I am ready to make a table from this lumber. Generally, you want your lumber to be approximately 8% moisture content for an indoor project. You can test your wood's moisture content with a simple meter available from Lowe's or Home Depot for approximately $25. The kiln I plan to construct will use a home dehumidifier to remove moisture, a simple box fan to circulate the air, and a space heater to raise the temperature inside the kiln. The lumber I plan to dry is 10 feet in length. I am constructing my kiln to be 14 feet long to allow 2 feet at each end of the kiln for equipment. I made it 4 feet high and 4 feet wide. This is a convenient size to allow the use of 4 by 8 foot foam insulation boards. I built the frame from 2 by 4s. Since my target length is 14 feet, I built the frame in two sections. The first section is 8 feet long and the second section is 6 feet long. After I assembled the frame, I cut four foam boards to 6 foot lengths. The offcuts were used to insulate the ends of the kiln. I cut two 20-foot lengths of heavy-duty plastic. I laid one piece of plastic out on the floor, then laid down the bottom insulation boards. I placed the wood frames on top of the insulation and secured the two sections together. I placed concrete blocks inside the frame. I placed stickers on the concrete blocks and stacked the lumber. Between each layer of lumber, I placed another set of stickers to allow air to flow through the wood stack. After placing the wood in the frame, I placed the dehumidifier and heater at one end of the kiln and the fan at the other end. I secured the side and the top insulation boards to the frame. I taped the bottom plastic sheet in place and attached the insulation boards to the ends of the kiln. I finished the kiln by wrapping it in the second piece of plastic. Okay, the kiln construction is complete. The fan and dehumidifier are running. I did, however, discover that consumer space heaters have a high temperature fuse that will disable the heater at the temperatures needed for the kiln. I built a heat source using heat lamps. We'll see how well that works. I have the dehumidifier in automatic mode and set to 40% humidity. I have the fan speed on low. I purchased a temperature and humidity controller to control the heat lamps and to monitor the humidity. I have the temperature controller set to 100 degrees. The kiln has been running for approximately 24 hours. The dehumidifier has removed a gallon of water. I plan to operate the kiln at these set points for approximately two weeks. I will monitor and measure the dehumidifier output. When the output drops off, it's time to begin the sterilization phase. I will turn off the dehumidifier and attempt to raise the temperature in the kiln to 150 degrees for about eight hours. This should kill any insects that may be in the wood. I'll be back when it's time to open the kiln and test the moisture content of the wood. I have opened up the kiln after a little over a week. The dehumidifier pulled out two and a half gallons of water. I'm sure the bulk of the moisture came from the building materials of the kiln. After the third day, the dehumidifier stopped drawing out any moisture. I continued to run the system for another three days. I turned the heat controller up to 150 degrees. The heat lamps were unable to bring the kiln up to this temperature. It topped out at 130 degrees. The moisture content of the wood measures 5.5%. It should rise slightly once it acclimates to the indoor climate. This board is from the kiln after it's been run through my surface planer. 
It looks great and is ready for my table project. For more information about the milling process, estimating weight and volume of lumber in your logs, or how to cut and dry lumber from your logs, visit us at www.logstolumbernow.com. That's it for today. See you next time. Thank you.